This video takes a closer look at the different belt types and their application, as well as their respective advantages and disadvantages. The simplest type of belt is the flat belt. It has a rectangular cross-section and was often made of leather in the early days. Today, however, high-strength synthetic materials such as polyamide or aramid are used. These are processed into so-called tension cords and form the force transmitting layer. The tension cords are embedded in a rubber core between a bottom and top cover. The bottom layer, where the belt is in contact with the pulley, can be coated with special rubber to increase friction and wear resistance. The top layer on the opposite side has a protective function only. Due to their design, flat belts can in principle run on both sides around the pulleys. In this case, both sides of the belt are specially coated. The belt can then be used for multiple belt drives and for crossed belt drives. Flat belts allow very high speeds that can transmit high torques and therefore high power. The flat belt also runs relatively quietly. This also has a positive effect on the service life and efficiency, approximately 98%, and thus on the maintenance of the belt. Due to the low belt thickness, the belt can be curved very strongly, which allows it to be used with relatively small pulleys. A disadvantage of flat belts is the relatively high bearing load due to the high preload. To prevent the flat belt from jumping off the pulley during operation, the cross-section of the pulley's contact surface is slightly convex. The height of the convexity is usually between 0.3 and 1.2 mm, depending on the width of the pulley. This ensures that the belt is self-centering and prevents it from running off. This paradoxical behavior is explained in more detail in a separate video. High bearing forces associated with flat belts can be significantly reduced by using V-belts. The V-shaped cross-section of the belt results in high friction forces on the flanks. Therefore, lower preload forces are sufficient to generate the frictional forces required for power transmission. As a result, the bearing load is significantly lower. Conversely, significantly higher torques can be transmitted with the same pre-tensioning forces using V-belts. To further increase power transmission, two or more V-belts can also be arranged parallel to each other. The so-called groove angle alpha is 38 or 32 degrees, depending on the pulley diameter, whereby the belt only comes into contact with the pulley with these inclined flanks. The belt does not touch the bottom of the groove. The normal forces Fn acting on the flanks are in equilibrium with the radial bearing force Fb. In this way, the relationship between the radial force Fb and the normal forces Fn can be established using the groove angle alpha. Since the frictional force FF is proportional to the normal force Fn, according to Coulomb's law, the frictional forces acting on the flanks are related as shown. Note that this frictional force acts equally on both flanks, so the total frictional force is doubled. Therefore, the relationship shown applies to the total frictional force. Compared to V-belts, the total frictional force of flat belts is only directly proportional to the radial bearing force FB. Therefore, for the same bearing load FB, V-belts have a higher frictional force by the factor shown in red. With a groove angle of 38 degrees or 32 degrees, this corresponds to around 3 to 3.5 times the value of flat belts. As V-belts only touch the flanks, they are specially designed for certain pulley diameter ranges. Otherwise, belts designed for larger pulleys, for example, would bend too much and the flanks would no longer rest properly on the pulley. Because V-belts are thicker than flat belts, more energy is required to bend the belt around the pulleys. As a result, V-belts have a slightly lower efficiency of 95% compared to flat belts. While the transmission ratio of flat belts is determined by the outside diameter of the pulleys, the so-called pitch diameter must be taken as a basis due to the special geometry of V-belts. The pitch diameter D is defined by the nominal width BW. The nominal width corresponds to the belt width at the neutral axis. Thus, according to the definition of the neutral axis, the nominal width always remains constant even when the belt is bent. It is important to note that after initial installation, V-belts must be run in before being put into service. This requires a correspondingly higher preload of approximately 30% during initial operation. Over the years, different types of V-belts have been developed for different applications. The most important ones are described in the following. 
Standard V-belts are standardized in accordance with DIN 2215 and have a height-to-width ratio of 1 to 1.6. Inside the belt, there are tension cords made of steel, aramid, polyester or glass cord at the level of the neutral axis, which are embedded between an elastomeric core and a top layer. To optimize friction or to protect the belt from external influences, the V-belt can be covered with a special rubber fabric. This is called a wrapped V-belt. Wrapped V-belts are used, for example, in pumps in the chemical industry for conveying aggressive media. In the absence of such a rubber coating, the flanks are raw and the belt is referred to as a raw edge V-belt. Without the relatively rigid wrapping, raw edge V-belts are more flexible. In addition, the power transmission from the pulley to the tension cords is not through the wrapping, but directly to the tension cords. This increases power transmission. To improve lateral stiffness, elastomer fibers are often incorporated into raw edge V-belts at right angles to the running direction. The advantage of raw edge V-belts is reduced wear due to the absence of wear-prone wrapping and the resulting smoother running. In addition, unlike wrapped V-belts, the raw edges can be ground, making it possible to produce belts with tighter tolerances. Compared to classic V-belts, narrow V-belts have a more favorable height-to-width ratio of 1 to 1.2. The greater height, for the same width as classic V-belts, allows for greater power transmission. Conversely, the belt width can be significantly smaller for the same power transmission. The resulting lower belt mass of the narrow V-belt reduces the centrifugal forces that occur during operation, allowing higher belt speeds to be achieved. However, the increased belt thickness has a negative effect on flexibility. In order to compensate for this and to be able to use narrow V-belts even with relatively small pulley diameters, they are cogged. This increases the flexibility even with strong curvatures. Narrow cogged V-belts are therefore usually found in a raw edge design. The increased power transmission combined with the high flexibility of narrow cogged V-belts results in a relatively space-saving design of such belt drives. In addition, the improved flexibility reduces the energy required to bend the belt as it runs around the pulleys, which increases efficiency compared to conventional V-belts. For this reason, standard V-belts are increasingly being replaced by cogged narrow V-belts. For very high power and applications with large speed changes, so-called wide V-belts with a height-to-width ratio of more than 1 to 2 are often used. They are usually cogged to improve flexibility. For example, Wide V-belts are used in continuously variable transmissions where the pulley diameter is changed by axial displacement to control the transmission ratio. Wide V-belts are therefore also referred to as variable speed belts. Another type of V-belt is the so-called double V-belt. Double V-belts are basically two V-belts placed on top of each other. This allows both sides of the belt to be used for power transmission. Due to their cross-sectional shape, Double V-belts are also known as hex belts. Hex belts are capable of driving two pulleys in opposite directions. When several individual V-belts are joined together by a cover plate, it is referred to as a craft band. The combination of several V-belts ensures, among other things, that the belt will not jump off the pulley under shock loads. Craft bands are usually made up of narrow cogged V-belts in a raw edge design. The poly V-belt, also called serpentine belt or V-ribbed belt, is a combination of a flat belt and a V-belt, with the tension cords running across the entire width, unlike a craft band. A V-ribbed belt thus combines the advantages of both belt types, that is, high flexibility combined with high power transmission and relatively low bearing load. Serpentine belts are used, for example, in multiple drives where one input pulley drives several output pulleys. This is the case, for example, in automobiles with internal combustion engines, where the engine must drive not only the alternator, but also the pump for the servo motor, the air conditioning compressor, the fan and the water pump. In addition to the belts described so far, there are also round belts. These round belts are used almost exclusively for motion transmission rather than power transmission. Due to their symmetrical cross-section, Round belts can be easily guided in different directions with the help of idler pulleys. Due to the elasticity of the belts considered so far, slippage must always be taken into account, which reduces efficiency and positioning accuracy accordingly. Special belts, such as timing belts, 
can prevent this because the teeth on the belt transmit the force in a positive manner. This prevents the belt from slipping over the pulley. Timing belts can therefore also be used for precise position control. Timing belts are also known as synchronous belts. Timing belts are used, for example, to drive print heads in 3D printers. Finally, let's summarize the typical properties of the most important belt types once again. Flat belts are characterized by very high belt speeds of up to 100 meters per second. However, the power that can be transmitted is not very high. The transmission ratio is in the range of maximum 15. A major disadvantage of flat belts is the very high slip, which leads to speed and power losses. In terms of noise, flat belts are very quiet. Flat belts are generally inexpensive, which makes them economically attractive. However, they require high preload, which results in higher loads on shafts and bearings. Compared to flat belts, the maximum belt speed of V-belts is approximately 30 meters per second. V-belts allow high power transmission. The achievable transmission ratios are around 20, which is slightly higher than with flat belts. A loss of speed due to slippage must also be taken into account with V-belts, although it is somewhat less than with flat belts. V-belts are as quiet as flat belts. In terms of cost, however, V-belts are slightly more expensive. The advantage of V-belts is that they require very little pretensioning, which reduces the load on the shafts and bearings and increases the service life of the entire drive unit. V-ribbed belts combine the advantages of flat belts and V-belts and achieve speeds of up to 60 meters per second. They offer very high transmittable power at very high transmission ratios of up to 40. The loss of speed due to slippage and noise is similar to that of V-belts. However, V-ribbed belts are slightly more expensive than conventional V-belts. The pretension required for V-ribbed belts is comparable to that of conventional V-belts. Timing belts achieve belt speeds of up to 80 meters per second and also offer high power transmission. The transmission ratio of timing belts is relatively low, typically a maximum of 10. A major advantage of timing belts is that there is no loss of speed because they operate without slippage. This makes them particularly suitable for precise positioning tasks. However, the noise generated by timing belts is relatively high. Timing belts are relatively expensive due to their more complex design. However, the required pretension is very low.